Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Instead of a recipe, we're going to share with you an interview that was done by a friend of ours, Brian Kroc from Crocs in the Kitchen, on his podcast show called I'm Losing It. The interview went so well, and we had such a great time. We thought you all might really enjoy watching it and learning a little bit more about us and our show. So there will be details in the links below to his show and also the Crocs in the Kitchen YouTube show of theirs. So enjoy the show. Yes, welcome to I'm Losing It. I'm your host, Brian Croc, and uh, you guys know I love stories. That's just what I am. You know, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I like going to movies. I like reading books. I like getting perspectives of other people outside of myself because it's the only way we learn. It's the only way we actually figure out what our fellow men and women are actually like is by just going and getting their story. So I once again have some very, very special guests and I am extremely excited to have on Jeffrey and Jill Dalton. How are you guys doing? Great, great. great. So, uh, so yes, this is, this is actually something that is very, uh, very interesting for me. And I said this to you offline, uh, before we started the interview that like, I'm, I'm super excited because, uh, the whole food plant-based cooking show, which is your show, you guys, you guys do it together, uh, was a direct inspiration for Crocs in the kitchen. When we first got started, you were an inspiration for, uh, the food that we could make. And uh, you, you definitely made it seem like this lifestyle was easy to do and, and achievable to do. And so thank you very much for, for establishing that and kind of paving the way for what we've actually done just, you know, in our last uh, year and a half here. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, we were always excited to meet people that, that have, you know, followed us for a long time. You know, it's hard when you, when you have a virtual uh, business like YouTube, you know, we don't get to meet the people face to face. We don't even know who we're talking to most of the time. So to, you know, actually get to meet you and, and hear your story and know your story and that, you know, we, we were at the beginning of your story. It's so exciting. I love that. Yeah. It's those early shows, the Nutritarian version of our show. <laughs> they were rough. <laughs> it was rough, but we, our audience was so small. Like we were just kept doing it and doing it. We're like, has anybody really watching this yeah, <laughs> we would care. It for us. Yeah. it's like three years of that you know just you look at the stats and it's just a flat line for, for three years for a long time. Yeah. yeah that's why it was it was kind of interesting for us because you know we posted our first video and it just exploded like right out of the gate and we were like okay i guess people do actually want to watch this uh and so it, I love, I love hearing the, that other perspective though, of, of the YouTube thing where it's, you know, going through those trenches and stuff, uh, because like, I've never actually experienced that. And so like, like my perspective of YouTube is very skewed when it comes yeah, to right, jump in right. and it blows up. And, yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm, I'm a viral sensation right off the bat. That's <laughs> amazing. Uh, but yes, the, uh, you, you mentioned it there, uh, about the, the nutritarian, uh, uh, what was actually the name of the channel back then? It was the, the yeah. Nutritarian Cooking Show. Yeah, the Nutritarian Cooking Show. And now it is the Whole Food Plant Based Cooking Show with right. the lovely intro that was uh, done by your daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, our daughter wrote it, uh, but our other daughter sings harmony. So it's actually both of them. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. I didn't know that actually. So there you go. Uh, complete other side note uh, I, I do actually follow your daughter's uh, music channel. Oh, is, she is insanely talented and I say that as a musician who's been a musician his entire life like she is she is insanely talented and I love her voice so yeah she is we're so so proud of her and you know there is some big thing in the works but we can't share yet so Wait, we can say that can we yeah we didn't say that she's gonna be on American okay Idol. <laughs> oh really now we, she just signed the contract we didn't sign the contract so. yeah they reached out to her <laughs> a couple months ago they discovered her and asked her to try out yeah, they wow started. that's so. that's amazing i actually auditioned to be on american idol one time i did not make it past the initial rounds though <laughs> yeah <laughs> she was really it was really nice too because the they're doing everything remote you know, with, right. with COVID going on. So it wasn't like going and standing in line. And yeah, yeah. That whole thing, they just contacted her through Instagram and said, would you, would you be interested in trying out? And then she tried out from our house here. Just, oh, wow. Perfect. Because, you know, she's still so young to us. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 
you know, so we want to protect her. And, you know, I've done, you know, I did try it out for uh, America's Got Talent a few years ago, and I got to kind of see the behind the scenes of how that works and how they find you and, and what happens when you get there to audition. And, and it's, oh, it's yeah, pretty America's unsavory. Pretty mm. you know? And I'm really like, here, this is our precious little daughter, you know, that we're, so this uh, COVID has actually been a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yep. the whole process. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted Jessica wanted me to make sure though that uh, that I tell people we will have links to uh, to uh, uh, Talia's uh, music channel as well in in the uh, the description and all of that. So uh, she, seriously, guys, if you're listening to this, go check it out. She is absolutely phenomenal. So I love it. Oh, thank you for that. She'll be so happy. Well, I mean, like, I'm, 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 I'm glad that I, I even get to, uh, to watch her talent unfold like that, you know, on, on, on the, uh, the, the, the channel. So it's fascinating. I love it. And like, cause I'm a lover of music. I've been a musician, like I said, my whole life, uh, raised in a musical family and all that. So like getting to see other talent out there, especially talent that is nothing like my own, uh, just, I love it. It's fantastic. We, you know, we saw on her very young, she was probably, I'd say nine. I got her a ukulele and she, I, I see, you know, if you, if you want to play it, I'll get you a nice one, but you got to learn, you have to learn it. Yeah. And she wrote a song on it. Yeah, and right we away. saw immediately like this kid has, cause she writes all of her music. She has you know, hundreds yeah. of songs. And it was just like watching from that to now. But she's, it, it's just been incredible. But she's been singing. singing since she was a baby. Yeah. She yeah. really sang before she could talk. I would sing in the car all the time and have all these different, you know, we listen to some pretty eclectic stuff, or we, I guess, I have a broad range of what we listen to, and, and I was just driving one day, and we were just singing along, and I just stopped, and I, I could hear her matching the notes, the and notes, she couldn't yeah. talk yet, and I was like, whoa, what is going on here? <laughs> like, I've never experienced that before, and she was on, on pitch, like, yeah. what? That just blew my mind, and ever since then, she's, she's been, she just sings all the time. All the time. I, I actually remember growing up, I was writing songs at about four or five um, for like my, my church kids group, whatever thing. Right. And, uh, and then uh, for like my musical influences, my dad bought me a record player and I listened to the greatest hits of the four seasons oh, and, yeah. and broke down the harmony parts like, and, and like could sing each individual part back to, to my dad. And like, he was floored by this. He absolutely loved it. So my, yeah, you know, awesome. like just, like I said, musical family. I know you guys do some stuff with music. I'll talk about that in just a bit as well. Um, but uh, I did actually want to get to, you know, the whole, the whole actual whole food <laughs> plant-based cooking show and, and sort of how that got to be. Um, so like, take us through the past, you know, before you actually made the decision to switch and, and explain like what your, what your lives were like back before the change over to whole food plant-based eating. Well, we, I think we had experimented with a lot of different types of eating styles, right? Or, or diet styles. You know, we tried the South Beach. We tried, you know, the whole... Um, Boy, if you, well, yeah, if you go well, all the way back to the beginning when we met, because it's just, yeah, it's interesting how it affects it. We, true. When we first met, I had met a guy who had brain damage. He'd been in a, a severe car accident uh, and they said he would never speak or walk. And when I met him, he was learning to play guitar. He was a musician. He was relearning to play guitar and we started hanging out and I was coming out of like drug addiction and I was a mess. And his mother had fed him plant-based food, like food as medicine in the hospital against the wishes of the doctors. And so this guy had, he was like Lazarus, like he had come back from what they were saying was, you know, it was impossible. And they didn't, right. they didn't even really want to understand how it was happening. So we were hanging out and I, I went completely like pretty much like raw vegan uh, 20, 25 years ago, yeah. which was incredibly hard to do back then. There was no right. internet. There was no you know, access to all this stuff. And so I had no idea what I was doing. And, but I, I, it was like the first exposure of food as medicine, as like you could actually eat your way to health uh, from an extremely difficult situation. So that, I just wanted to rewind that because it was right, such an right. important thing for me. Like it, it planted the seed that many, many years later, uh, I sort of re-recognized like, oh yeah, it's, it's what we're eating. It's causing mm -hmm. these things. And I, I'm from the Midwest, so I'm kind of a meat and potatoes girl, you know, very basic foods. My mom loves to bake. So there was always, you know, 
homemade bread and, and cookies and pies and all of that kind of stuff, but it was always butter and we used a lot of Crisco and, you know, we, there was meat at every meal. So I, I had no clue about, you know, food affecting your health. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, when we married, <laughs> I was still a meat eater, you know, and that was, you know, one of the things that was, I guess, the, <laughs> oh, one of no. the deciding factors. Of, I don't know if I can marry this girl. I know she eats meat because I've seen her do it. <laughs> yeah, I was having uh, dinner with a friend of mine who was, was vegan back then. And he was like, are you going to ask? She'll marry you. I'm serious. And, and this still to this day, it's so funny. I was like, it's, it's just, there's two things. It's like, she's really into country music. Uh, I'm not a country music fan. I used to she be. She used to be. No, and I was really like, either. she eats meat. I know she does. She's eating chicken, like right in front of me. It's like, future children. <laughs> I was like, wow, that, those were your deterrents. Wow, so deep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I did want to ask, though, uh, where do you guys actually like originate from? Because uh, you said you're from the Midwest. Uh, yeah, so Nebraska. what part of the Midwest? Nebraska, gotcha. In a town of less than 100 people. Yeah, it's small you know, I went to a three, three room school schoolhouse graduated eighth grade with six kids, you know, it was that whole bizarre experience for today's age, you know. For our generation, yeah. Yeah. Super. You're from? Oh. from uh, upstate New York. Oh, nice. I grew up in Liverpool outside of Syracuse, but uh, from the smaller town. Originally. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I actually... Since then. Yeah, I know. I actually, I was, I was hoping to actually ask you a couple questions about that uh, in, in a bit here. Uh, I know, like, for me, like, I grew up in a, a small town just outside of St. Louis. Uh, but I mean, like, small town for me is, you know, 25,000 people, something like right. that. But uh, I, I also had that small school experience because I went to private school. So I graduated with, uh, with seven other people in my class. And so, oh, wow. yeah. yeah, it was a wonderful experience. Yes, wow. yes. Oh, so great. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, the Midwest people rule anyway. So you know, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's that. But. I can spot them now. Like I'll be in, even in an airport or you meeting people. I'm like, you're from the Midwest. I can t there's just something I can't, I can't tell you what it is, but there's just something. When I was, when I was in England, uh, I actually heard it because I heard somebody say something and then something happened and they said, Ope. And that's like the, the dead Ope. giveaway for, for anybody from like Illinois, you know, and, and, and like that, you know, in that vicinity. So like, I, I instantly turned around and I was like, where are you from? And he goes like, Chicago. I'm like, yep, I knew it. I knew it. That's so, hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, we can, we can spot our own. We, we know this. It's probably why I was drawn to you, Jill, anyway, you know, because right. like, we right. had the Midwestern connection. <laughs> Uh, so, so you guys, you guys met, you got married and, and, uh, you know, you were eating meat still, you were being vegan, uh, Jeff and, uh, and like, so I, how does that progress? Yeah, I changed over, you know, we started yeah, eating we vegan together. the same, but then, you know, we finances, you know, we, we just couldn't afford to eat the way we were eating anymore. So, you know, we, we just kind of went back to our old habits and then, you know, having kids, we were super poor. We just didn't have, I mean, we, we spent a lot, or I, I should say we, we ate a lot of pasta, you know, a lot of pasta with a jar of ragu sauce, mm. a lot of crack, you know, saltine crackers. It was whatever I could get really the Dollar Tree, you know. We had, we'd made a decision and having kids that one of us would be with them. That right. We didn't, because of how we grew up, I grew up, I was like a latchkey kid and we didn't want to do that. So yeah. mm. I, you know, My mom stayed home. made like seven bucks an hour in movie theater when we had our daughter. And, I mean, we just yeah. we lived in someone's basement and, you know, we kind of made it work, but yeah. the idea of living this vegan lifestyle. But and, yeah, food was, was like not, the last thing. Not going to happen. You know, yeah. that, and I think food addiction cheap. too, you know, the, yeah, the reality sure. of, of how we had grown up and the things that we had as comfort food. As you go through stress in life, it's like you go back to those things, which was right. part of, in our show, what we focused on so early was comfort food. Right. Or so like if we're going to do this, it's got to be lasagna. It's got to be enchiladas, yeah. the things that pizza and the things that we would go to. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. We took our favorites. We're like, what, what foods are our favorite foods? And let's just transform those first so that we know at least so we, we have something to eat. <laughs> yeah. We'll build back up our, our, our recipe, you know, page. And yeah. yeah, we just kept building on that. But we went, we kind of, like Joe started to say, we, we went in all directions. Like we did uh, this Healing Traditions book in the zone and Atkins and South Beach. And because we, we were gaining yeah. weight through our, our you know, parenting years yeah. and just struggling like to understand 
you know, why? And every, all of those things tell you some reason why that's not true. Right. So you just sort of spin and, and you try whatever they say. Yeah, it may work for a few, couple weeks, but then you're back. You know, you gain it back. Gain it back. More, and, yeah. and then you're just craving stuff all the time. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's like a, a restriction kind of diets, you know. We ended up in, uh, we had a farm in New Zealand. I say farm, it was like a, just a 10 acre block. And we, we ran our neighbor's cattle in exchange for fresh beef, like organic beef. And yeah, we had our grass own fed well, organic, and, you know. Yeah, had gardens, we raised chickens. And so we kind of did the, the local sort of paleo, uh, what they say is like the ideal lifestyle in that philosophy. We were right. living it, like really, really living it. And just blowing up. Yeah, we gained <laughs> like, so much. We gained so much weight there. Yeah. And you know, we were eating, drinking raw milk because we thought that was the best. And mm. Yeah. Quick question though: Like, how did you end up in New Zealand? Like, of all places. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I I was a uh, I I don't do it anymore, but I was a web developer for years. I had my own, own business, and we went through the housing crisis. Our, we foreclosed a house. Yeah. And, in went through that whole thing and when we did we we found ourselves sort of like in a, in a way freed it's like well we don't really have anything but we also don't have anything yeah we also don't have a huge mortgage hanging yeah. on our head you know? <laughs> so we ended up we moved to hawaii first we had met someone that uh we stayed with and then we ended up renting a house and we lived on two islands in hawaii over two years when the kids were young just wow. very very simply we and we, we homeschooled so we didn't we didn't have to worry about schooling you know transferring them with school yeah, and school. everything so and then with my work we could we knew we could kind of be anywhere so we were pushing that envelope like how far out can we go <laughs> you know anywhere there's internet is it you know we live like on the edge of the north island on the hamakua coast like way out at the end of this road yeah. just barely getting internet service and, <laughs> and then we lived in maui for a year in south maui and then new zealand was sort of the next step of that it was yeah like, we didn't want to give up island life but hawaii is very expensive yes. and, we, and mm -hmm. And the culture, you know, our girls were preteens at that time, and, and the culture for girls there's, you know, a little. It's pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just didn't want them growing up with those, uh, with that crowd. Yeah. <laughs> young young people, it's just such a party yeah. culture, and there's, it's an island. It's like there's only so much to do. Right. You know, it's very expensive, and so we saw and a lot of people that we knew. Uh, their kids would leave the island as they got older to go get work or to start families. Mm -hmm. So it really struck us like, well, we don't want to live here if our kids are going to grow older and have no opportunities and right. just because I can work here, you know, which is yeah. how a lot of people on the island are. It's like they right. have some thing that they can do so they can stay there. Right. Uh, but without that thing, it's really hard to stay there. Right. Yeah, so New Zealand was kind of the pretty next. much, you know, just service workers like uh, waitresses and bartenders and that mm. kind of thing. Yes, so Other than that, it's it. pretty slim pickings. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of like writers and producers, people who can work remotely, right. you know, that make money to live there. And New Zealand yeah. was like, yeah, it's kind of the next step. We didn't like, want to give up the island life, you know, and we thought, well, New Zealand essentially is just two islands. They're just bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Less <laughs> people. <Island nations>. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to us. And, and the it, currency stuff was in our favor. Yeah. So, you know, we had, had been saving for a long time and we went on a business visa. Um, which is which kind of it's harder to do now but if you start a business in a country it's one way to immigrate and we were gotcha. the right age and all that stuff so yeah now we'd never get back we never even been there we, we immigrated we sold everything and just went with like a few suitcases yeah everybody thought we were just wow. insane like wait a minute you've never been to new zealand and you're just gonna move there like yes why not <laughs> well, I know uh, for us, Jessica has has this idea that she wants to move away next year to another country of, uh, and she she wants to move to England. But uh, I'm like, okay, you know, my brain's all the logistics of everything, and it's like, okay, how do we actually achieve this? How do we get this done? How do we blah blah blah? And so I'm still at the same time, just like, you know what? If we can actually get to the point where we can do that, why not? Let's do why it. Not? And you don't have kids yet. I mean. Yeah. Do it while you can. The roughest part would be would be actually getting the dogs, uh, so to oh, transfer them over. So. And they have <laughs> like, to quarantine for like six weeks. Actually, actually, they don't have to do that anymore. Uh, really? the, you, you can get a doggy passport, and it, as long as you it can prove that they've gotten like all their vaccinations and like that kind of stuff, you can actually take them in. But England does have a weird thing where they will not let you fly animals in. And so the only way to actually get them into England is to like fly to Paris and then drive your animal in somewhere else yeah, yeah. Oh, that's but, still, 
Still Fortunately, we, we have people who could help us out doing all that kind of stuff. So it would be the easier way to do that. Uh, slight side note, Jessica put this into the notes as well. So if anybody's listening, Jessica actually put together like all the notes. She was super excited to do this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Jessica learned as of today that you have a wonder dog named River. Yes. And we have a wonder pup named Oliver. Oh, nice. And so she wanted to know like, well, what kind of dog is River and like all that kind of, so if you could briefly explain that one, go for it. Yeah, she's a, a Carolina dog and uh, people look at us funny like that. Ha ha ha, that's like another way of saying a mutt. She's actually a Carolina dog, there is a breed. <laughs> um, but we rescued her from Saving Grace. It's just a local um, dog rescue business. Uh, we got her when she was a puppy. Uh, she's three years now, a little over three years, and she's been vegan her the whole, whole her whole life. We oh, wow. fed her, we tried a few different foods and they didn't seem to work very well for her, you know, just different stuff, either, you know, coming out one end or the other. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. we found V-Dog and we've had her on V-Dog wow. the whole so time yeah. and she has more energy than we know what to do with. Yeah. We take her, we take her in the mornings on a three, uh, three mile walk every morning, year every round. morning, year round. And once we get back home, she'll nap and, you know, lay around a bit for a couple hours and then she's ready to go again. Yeah. And so one of our daughters usually takes her on a little short walk in the afternoon. Nice. But she's always waiting for someone to play with her and someone to, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just like, like ready boing, boing, boing. I mean, yeah. Super healthy dog. And she, she's yeah. actually never had any health problems, which is oh, wow. we've had dogs over the years, places we lived in, other than she ate a, uh, a toothpick. <laughs> uh, and it, it, she was bleeding like in, you know, in her throat in oh, wow. her mouth wow. or something. And we took her to the vet and they're like, well, it could be liver cancer. It could be, you yeah, know, let's give they her all scared these us to death. And, and it was just like, that she had yeah. eaten a, a wooden toothpick that had cut her, but uh, she's never had any health problems. And we, yeah. we did a show on her. We did Ooh. dog treats and we got a lot of hate, yeah, a lot of crazy. Uh, dogs can't be vegan. You aren't even human beings. Well, How can you yes, do this to a dog? Be. And but she's extremely healthy. Yeah, know. like if we thought that she was suffering in some way or that her health was not good because of what we were doing, we would change absolutely. Yeah. But there's been no indication. Mm. And, you know, being vegan or plant based, we don't want to contribute to that, um, you that know, industry. to the meat industry. Yeah. And the dog food industry, you know, that's it's like the line. worst of the meat industry. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. if we can avoid that, what was at the all, movie? It's uh, Dog yeah. Food. Have you ever seen that? Fantastic. It's on, I think movie. it's on Netflix. No, I haven't actually seen that one yet. It's like it's sort of like uh, forks over knives for dog food. <laughs> oh, interesting. They yes. sort of end on a note where it's like you try to get you know grass fed whatever, but they show you what the bulk of the industry is and why. Mm. Like when we take yeah, our dogs to the, the park. Food. You know, nine out of ten dogs we see are as in a bad a shape as their owners. They're they're obese. They're full of tumors. It's so common. It, yeah. Like it was shocking. They have the same health problems. problems as their owners. You know, diabetes. Yeah, tumors, they're on medications. Cancer. It's like they're dogs. You know. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. So, I know that's controversial. Sorry. Audience. Oh no no no. <laughs> Any, anything you guys want to talk about, I am down for. So I mean, yeah. this so, this you know, is watch that movie because it really is dog informative. Food, I think it's it shows you how they what is actually in the dog food. Uh, it's all it's the stuff they can't feed to people. Right. Yeah. Once you know what they feed to people, that is terrifying. Sometimes yeah. they get it's the animals cool. from the shelters that are putting them to sleep and they don't even bother to take the flea collars off. So all of that stuff, the flea collar mm -hmm. stuff is in, is in the food. It's in dog. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. So uh now okay transition back to this okay so you're in new zealand right and uh and and you you've gone through all of these different types of of diets and books and whatnot so how do you get onto whole food plant-based that was actually it's funny it's kind of karma um, i had given a friend of mine uh paul bragg's water fasting book probably 10 years right. prior when we lived in chicago we, we worked together we'd gotten into water fasting and had lost some weight and we're feeling better and um I, we, I just kind of one of those things he asked me about it I gave him a book and then forgot about it for years and out of the blue I got an email from him and he's like hey man you, you gave me this book all these years ago and it started me on this journey and I found Dr. Furman 
and I went, he lost like a hundred pounds. Eat to live. He found Eat to live. live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's got his mom on it. She got off all her medications and he's like, I just wanted to return the, the favor. He's like, check out Eat to Live. And we got the book and just, we were just like, yeah, let's do this. This is. Well, and at that time too, I had just started, I started having heart palpitations and I just generally, I wasn't feeling good. It's just achy all the time, migraines, migraines all the time. Um, and we were on a, a visa. So in a, a, New Zealand was socialized healthcare, right? So you have to, if you're on a visa, you have to keep, everything has to be perfect. You gotta be healthy. So we really, you know, we didn't want them to boot us out of the country. So we're like, you know, we need to get ourselves in check here because they could boot us out of the country just for having minor health issues, really. Which they do. Yeah, Yeah. they do it on a regular basis. I was, uh, we were having our physicals for our visa and I was like 260, 270. I got, it was the biggest I'd ever been. Um, And I was pre-diabetic and I, I mean, we just were feeling terrible. And we were doing all these things, like the organic beef. We thought we were doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. eggs and the whole thing. So when we read this book and what he, you know, Furman was laying out, we're just like, we just let's do it. Yeah. And remembering <laughs> like what we had learned from Paul Bragg and what we had learned like from the guy I knew years and years ago, a lot of stuff started to click for us. Like we've got to try this. And uh, we tried it. It's funny. We did it like very strictly. We lost some weight. And then just slowly started creeping back because we'd love to go out to restaurants and just started eating like kind of the regular diet again and gained all the weight back. Like we, we kind of did that cycle once, um, even with plant-based. And then it really hit us. Like I was turning 40 and my back had gone out. Like I was just having like old man health problems and she was having the same same. thing. And we were like, we need to go back to this and do it like for For real. Like let's do this. You know, we know that this works. Yeah, that's really where we started. That's when we started the show. We started doing stuff out of our house on Meetup, which was really weird. Uh, like, there, don't it's put really, your I house mean, on Meetup. I don't know about <laughs> it's not the same here. I mean, in New Zealand, people do Meetup surfing, so they just, they just find the up, groups yeah. that they're like, oh, I don't know what this is. I'm just going to show up, even not knowing what the meeting is about at all. So they'd show up. And they thought I was selling something because I'd make them a whole this, this big meal. And they're like, okay, so what do you do? What, what do you we, sell? What do we buy? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm just showing you how to cook healthy food and sharing it with everybody. It's just like a potluck, essentially. And people were just so confused. We and said then, raw food in one and a guy showed up with like a tray of a raw, tray of raw fish. Raw fish. And- we were like, oh gosh, wow. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's not what you do? We're like, no, no, maybe we need to be much more clear about what that means. So we ended up doing, um, we did some classes in the library, public library for free. Yeah. But it, it just felt like it was so much work. And it's like, this is not really helping. It wasn't effective. And I was working in technology. So we're like, yeah, we should just try YouTube and just see, you know, yeah. like, is anybody interested in this? Because there wasn't, at the time, there really wasn't a lot of stuff on Nutritarian. We thought it was called Nutritarian, which is something we probably should say. Right. I didn't know that it was really just called like whole food plant-based, right. which yeah. was coined by Dr. Campbell. We thought this way of eating was called Nutritarian. So there was nothing. It was like Dr. Furman stuff and that's it because no one can use that name, right. which we ran into. Yeah, we had to change our problem, name because yeah. it's trademarked. And, um, but that, yeah, that was kind of where we started. It was like, let's just, we got a used camera off their a version of Craigslist. Yeah. For like 300 bucks and some lights and just started filming shows just to see we did some theme shows like a zombie show yeah oh yeah i gotta check out fun. the zombie yeah. show it's awesome <laughs> well, now <laughs> i will <laughs> it was so much fun okay we dressed our kids up as zombies and, uh, <laughs> that was also a tremendous amount of work doing the theme yeah. shows but uh, it was fun. and you know there was enough people watching that we felt like well at least doing it this way we're we're able to help people and right. it'll be here if more people want to use it. Doing the library and stuff, it was just like, yeah. And in the awesome. beginning, the, the reception, like people were so grateful and so so kind, yeah, you know, and so encouraging. It. You know, it wasn't until later that we start, you know, the trolls started coming. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Enter the trolls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that wasn't until we probably about year three when things started taking off, and you know, we got. I did a my transformation video, which we never did a transformation video, and I didn't. We didn't even really preface it as that um it just ended up being that and it's funny because we spent all this time and work on each show 
and it, it would take us just hours and hours and hours and then you do all the editing and the pr producing of it and then the, at three years i sit down on the couch with, phone. with my phone <laughs> and write my tripod right in front of me and i just like blabbled on for 10 minutes and it just went up. that's that's our most viewed like, video still oh, Six hundred thousand wow. views or something so yeah it like, took the least effort <laughs> It's getting the most traffic. Maybe we, we have something to learn here. We yeah, never, I, we never I know won. that one. I know that one hardcore. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I know that like all the work and time spent on like one video. It's like even even one that we did just a couple days ago. Like I spent like three days getting it filming, editing, getting all the graphics right, Jessica doing the blog post, like just hours and hours of work. And it's like, and it does okay. And then we do one video of us just talking about whatever random subject about, you know, us losing weight or gaining weight or whatever it happened to be. And it's like, and that one does three times as many views. And you're just like, what? <laughs> yeah, you just never know. Yeah. Or even what recipe it's going to be. We think, you know, one recipe might, oh, wow, people are going to love this one. And it just kind of bombs. Yep. And another really simple one. Oh, the flatbread. Like it's the just flatbread, water and it's lentils. two ingredients. It's like 300,000 views. Like just tons totally. of, we're like, what? <laughs> I don't understand. So we just put out, we're just like, you know, just put whatever recipes we come up with. Don't worry about if we think people are not going to like it or like it. Just put it out. Yeah. We have yeah. no. You like it. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. As long as we like to eat it. Yeah. Right. yeah. So then uh, my, that leads right into my next question, though, which is actually about like your your uh, recipe stuff, your cooking uh, aspects, because did you always enjoy cooking before? Was that like something that you liked or was that or was just something that you sort of progressed into? No, I actually have a disdain for cooking. She's really. Dumb. Oh, life. I mean, I love to bake. I, we tell the world I love to bake because my mom's a baker. She taught me well. I love baked goods. So yeah, that's baking. something I really enjoy doing. But, you know, you can't eat a whole lot of baked goods. That's you know, it, Jessica is the exact same way. She, uh, she, she absolutely loves baking, cannot stand cooking whatsoever. I, I, so. don't, I mean, I, for me, it's more like it's a science project. If I put it in that context, like I'm always trying to create something new. I love the creation pro process, but once yeah. I figure it out, we probably won't have that meal or that recipe for months. We'll eat it like three or four times in a row. Yeah, she's trying to when figure I'm practicing it, out. it. And then we won't have it for But like the, the <laughs> daily act of, of cooking and providing, because you know, there's four of us here, we're all adults. We eat a lot of food. Yeah. So that means a lot of food needs to be cooked. And that mm -hmm. daily, the mundane part of cooking, I just, oh, I dread it. So luckily now we have two children that are grown. They and like both, to cook. So they base, take, yeah. you know, one kid takes two nights, another kid takes two nights, and then <laughs> I just left with the three. I'm like, this is all good for me. I, I would say it. that to your audience, like, because people ask this so many years. When we switched, our kids were young teenagers. And all we just mm -hmm. said, we said, look, you know, we have to do this for our health, but this is what we're doing in our home. Right. And what you do at school or whatever, we can't stop you, but this is what we're going to do. And they resisted just a little. They tell the story themselves. Yeah. Um, but they saw us change so fast, like drop weight and feel better so fast. I think their resistance just kind of disappeared. And they're like, yeah, we want to. Well, and they were, they were really enjoying the food. I yeah, mean, if the, the food was this, not, the if the food good. wasn't good. It would, it would have been a different story, I think, for them. I think they would have re resisted a lot more. Yeah. But now, no problem. No problem. And they had seen, you know, we had a cow slaughtered when we were doing the trade. And mm -hmm. I told them, like, if you want to eat this, then you need to see this happen. You can't. The idea of being separated from the murder part of this can't be. It's the slaughter right. part of it. So they watched this cow get shot in the head in our yard. I carried its liver down into the kitchen and cooked it up. You know, they, they do like a yard butcher and they take it off yeah. and package it. It's pretty brutal. But yeah. they had been through that lifestyle of like mm. being animal slaughtered and raising their own chickens and rabbits. And so transitioning to this meant a lot to them in right. other ways because they knew where things came from at least, whether or not they were going to eat them. And, but now because they're both plant-based, you, you, people have probably seen them on the show. They've done episodes of the show, but they cook, they're both amazing cooks and yeah, they make, they, are amazing. they get out the recipe book, our book, you know, it's like, what are we having for dinner? And they yeah. have things they like. And so we have, yeah, they cook for us now. <laughs> but though, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like when, I'm, when it's my night, it tends to be the, the healthier stuff. And then they, they rip out the macaroni and cheese yeah. and then, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, and they're like, okay, well, we kind of know, but it's a good balance. Yeah.
Yeah, it always cracks me up whenever uh, we're at home because I'm the primary cook, you know, in the household. Uh, Jessica right. will will do baking and stuff like that occasionally, you know, for the holidays or whatever. But uh, I'm the one pretty much doing like everything across the board as as far as like the recipes are concerned and all of that. But the funny part for me is that. Uh, I'll ask Jessica what she wants and she'll say something you know, like, oh, can you make chili? And I'll be like, okay, I can throw something together. And she's like, no, 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 no. I want you to follow your recipe to make the chili. And I'm just like, come on, like, let me experiment here and figure something out. It's like, but no, she refuses. She's like, you follow that recipe. Like, yeah. that's what I like. And I'm yeah. like, okay, fine. Like, well, what did you do last time? Because, yeah, you know, I, I do, I like to wing it. He's like, well, well, this is different. What did you do last time that was different? Because that was better. <laughs> I'm like, well, I didn't write it down. So that's been a, a kind of running joke for for years and years and years. It's like, are you writing this down? Yep. Are you writing, even if you don't know if it's going to work? Write it all down while you're doing it, so that if it does turn out fantastic, we have it. And Jill, you and I, we're on the same page here. So it's like I love to just wing it. I don't. Uh, I hate following recipes. I liken it. I liken it to jazz. You know, it's like, do I want to play something that's just completely written out and like, you know, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm, you know, I love classical music. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, there is something great about improvisation, especially right. when it comes to like everything coming together and forming something really, really good. It is very right. similar, and I explain this to people. Like, it is very, very similar to writing a really good song when you develop a really good recipe. Like even some of the words that we use to describe those things are exactly the same. Those, uh, the uh, synesthetic words is what they're actually called. Um, where it's, you talk about things that are bright, you know, or things that like, oh, this is, this is an earthy thing. Like, you know, it's like, that's, those are words that don't actually translate to really like flavors, but we use them to describe flavors the same way we can describe sounds. So yeah, there you go. There's my, there's my weird little tangent for the day. Or ours is, you know, it's like, what's in the refrigerator right now? What do I have? You know, what's, what's about ready to go bad? Like, oh man, that cauliflower has been there for four or five days. It's starting to get, a, you know, some spots on it. I need to use that for something. So that's going in the chili or whatever it is, even though that's not in the recipe. Because yeah. I need to use it before it goes bad. That sounds so, some of our, our best recipes have yeah. ended up, like our salad dressings, we were using cashews, which we still do, but they're really fatty. We didn't have it. And I yeah, was doing right. oatmeal at the time. So I just put oats in the blender. And it turns out they turn into this creamy, just right. like kind of like cashews. Now it's fatty, but uh, and we started making salad dressings with them. And then they were really popular. People, yeah. people love it. I'm just using a teeny bit of like sunflower seeds or cashews instead of that being the base. Like a half a cup. Or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like our, I think our, our crack dressing That's named crack by you Jeff, about. you know, yeah. there's two cups of cashews in that one. So. It's really delicious, but it's, you know, so, so fatty. fatty. <laughs> I Wait, nod along yeah. as my last recipe video has a half a cup of cashews in it. So, <laughs> yeah, right. It's so hard not to. It's like, it I know, they're so good. It's a great little nut. I mean, what can you say? So, yeah. But uh, so, as far as like the recipe developing then goes, it's basically just you messing around with stuff then, right? It's just keep figuring uh, I, stuff out. I, I mean, I like to get on Pinterest and, and just look through photos. And I, I'm always looking at, you know, well, what other foods are in our history or our favorites that we haven't made yet? Or, you know, I ask people, like there's, there's certain viewers that have been with us for a long, long time. I'm like, what is your favorite food? Or do you have a favorite food that I haven't made a recipe for? And I'll create that. And right now, actually in our, our membership community, we started doing a monthly, I have a wall in my office, my office, yeah, it's just a room with a blackboard, you know, a painted blackboard. Um, and I keep all of the, I have two lists, like one is all of the ideas of things that I want to create or try out. And then I have another list of the things that are ready to film. Mm. So I take a picture of that and I put it on our, our membership community and we have a vote. I'm like, which thing do you want me to create next? So that it kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off of me uh, of trying to figure out what do I think people want to make. So I'm like, let them choose. And actually the last, the last vote was the sweet potato muffins. And that was the last thing. I, I put it on there just as a, some random thing. I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. That probably would be good, but eh, I'm not that excited about it. Put it on the list. People went crazy for that. I, I was like, what? Yeah, I, did, yeah. I would have thought the burger or the, uh, there was something else that was on there that was, 
a really popular type of thing, but no one was interested in it. I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this like every month and let them decide what I make. So nice. that's been really, really fun. Let's say uh, restaurants too. I mean, not right yeah, now with the yeah. pandemic, but we, we always love going out to eat to our travels and that. And that was, became a thing. It's like we'd go right. to a vegan restaurant, try four or five different things. All of us would get something different and then go, okay, we got to figure out yeah, how to make this. Or, or a version of it that would work with what we do. I'm right. the exact same way. Like yeah. that, was, that was half the trip that we went to England was just us going to different <laughs> vegan places and figuring out what yeah. we wanted to do. So, Yeah, and you fantastic. start dissecting it. Like, what do you think's in there? Oh, I, I can kind of taste this. I bet that's what that is. Oh, okay. All right. We have, actually have a show coming up for a noodle bowl that's amazing. It's like all these mushrooms. And it's right. a restaurant here. And we basically just pleaded our case because we kept going there to get it. Yeah, we like, met the but show. it's really, really salty. We're like, we really like this. We'd like to do a version you know, would you write it out for us? And it was like three pages did. of instructions. This oh, guy wow. came to us, so. But yeah, it was, oh my gosh. So, so much salt. salt. <laughs> so much tamari sauce. It was like, oh my gosh, it was like two, oh, it was crazy. Yeah, it was a lot. But I mean, it makes a pretty, a pretty big batch because you have to make the broth first. But yeah, it was like at least a cup of tamari sauce. And I mean, holy cow, if you look at the That's sodium content sodium. in there, it's yeah. just mind blowing. I was like, oh wow, I don't know how I'm going to create that kind of saltiness without that much of that. <laughs> and we, we, I don't know if you found this in your travels, like because we eat a low salt, we, we use sodium, like we use Bragg's and usually our stuff, but we've gotten so used to that. When we do go out, it's really it's hard to so find places salty. that we want to eat because it's usually so salty and oily and stuff. We're not used to it anymore. And, uh, yeah, and don't true. really don't prefer it. It's like, wow, this is way too much yeah. salt, way yeah. too much sugar or whatever. I think that uh, the only time I ever asked another restaurant for a recipe for a dish, they were just like, no. Yeah. I was really? like, okay, okay <laughs> sure. We're going to feature them. We told them because they're, yeah, they're trying to survive now. We're like, in business, you know. Yeah, tell everybody where you're at. Well, that, that was the thing is the company I asked, they were going out of business. And so I was like, <laughs> what is this recipe? Like, seriously, just tell me. It's like, and, and just because I want to know like what you guys actually did. I want to know the technique of this. And they were just like, no, we're not going to give it to you. And I was just like, and then it's going to waste. Like, let it, let me at least have a recipe or something here. It's like, sheesh. Yeah. But no, nope, they they didn't want to do it. Detective. Yeah. <laughs> I I thought for sure this guy was never going to go for it. But we had been regular customers there for a while too, so they'd seen us there many many times, and we always order that bowl. So yeah, I think we kind of created a little bit of a not a friendship, but a, a following already. You know that we were. Diehards, you know. <laughs> Diehard customers. And you know, to give credit to our, our daughters, have come up with recipes on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the same. Like they learn to experiment to figure out what they like. So there's things that right. we were already making, and that's why we had them do those episodes. It's usually because it's a recipe they came up with, and we're right. like, oh, you got to come on and do that. You know, do that episode. Right. And they both do that now. They both really, I feel like, have become. Yeah, they're really good at for it. what they're making, like whole food, plant based, you know, oil free food. And they'll come up with new stuff, and it's like we always talk about it as future food. This is what yeah. people eat in the future. They're they're fully sort of prepared to live that life at nineteen and twenty one. You know, right. they, they have been for for some years now. Yeah, they were raised in it. They uh, not like uh, not like you know the rest of us that were raised. Uh, growing up on the meat and potatoes in the Midwest here. Yeah, right. right. That's a lot of a lot of habits to curb. You know. Use yeah, I, I can definitely. Instead of butter and eggs and baked goods, I mean, mm -hmm. come on. Yeah, it's I mean, it was definitely uh, it was definitely a, a learning curve for me to unlearn some things when it came um, even just to purely cooking uh, things or pre or preparing things. Like it was it was a a, a good little clip there, and that's why we switched over to the whole food plant-based way of eating. And then it was, it was almost another year before we even remotely thought about starting the channel uh, and then, and then getting going on that. And then like from there, I'd already had recipes developed for certain stuff that we enjoyed. And, you know, we'd lost a, a bunch of weight by that time. So it was like, it kind of just all worked out that way, that way. Right. But yeah. So uh, the, the question that I do have though, is you guys are, are now currently living in North Carolina, right? Yes. So how did you end up going from New Zealand to North Carolina? Especially since neither one of you apparently well, lived there. So we had no, no plans on moving back to the States. We kind of, when we moved out of the States, we were just done. 
we were the burned out expats. Yeah, we were like, like we're going to no. go live in another country and get out of the craziness of America. Yeah. And I New Zealand, you know, I mean, there's a lot of beautiful things about New Zealand. And on paper, New Zealand is like paradise. Yeah. And after we moved there, we learned that they had hired a PR firm. And yeah, that on paper, green image is it's, not. Yeah, it's green because they, they project that to the world, but it's not actually the case. And right. they're, they are some of the heaviest polluters in the world per capita. Mm. Really bizarre. But they do have some programs now. Like they're, they're, they're completely trying to nuclear free. Yeah. They're, you know, all this stuff that, you know, there's their healthcare is way ahead of the game yeah. than here. I think we, uh, healthcare, yeah. without, you know, we don't want to dump on our personal reasons for the uh, culturally, it just wasn't a good fit for us. Yeah. Mm. We never, our kids too. And that, that really struck us. Like the kids just could not find, we'd lived in yeah. a couple different places in New Zealand. And the, the culture was, if you're into like hunting or, or sports, rugby, uh, we don't really drink, but if you're into drinking, beer drinking and, yeah, beer. that's sort of like baseline that's how people socialize. And we just, and plus, you know, we had gone plant-based, which yeah, at the which time made us like aliens. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing, there's no, people are like, what is that? You know, they're, they're dragging a, a dead boar into their kitchen from the backyard. You know? Yeah. Those so the, weird Americans. Yeah, it's like, it's just yeah. crazy, we were kind of crazy Americans. And our kids went to school there. They decided they wanted to go to, to high school. From homeschooling, yeah. From homeschooling. And we were like, well, okay, seems like a better a better place to go to school you know not like there like here there's no here. you know metal detectors on the doors and guns and all that kind of stuff we're like well it seems pretty safe all right all right you guys can have that experience but they just it it didn't work good. for them yeah they weren't <laughs> happy and yeah so we, we were looking we went to australia and we thought about immigrating to australia but immigration as you guys will find if you do it it's not easy yeah. especially with a family but um, and we kind of realized like we just didn't have it in us like to start over again in another, in another country, country and go through being on visas for years. We're, we're permanent residents in New Zealand because we finished the process. But mm. the idea of starting that over again, it just we yeah, were just it like we so can't, much work. can't do it. So, so we really have to go back to the States. And yeah. uh, Jill and, and our oldest daughter, Sojourner, took the trip. We're like, you guys get to yeah, decide. Yeah, we studied a lot. We, we scoured because we've lived, we we've moved a lot since we've been married. and we've moved around the country a bit so we really scoured the country you know like where is it you know what's the the climate that we want to live in we're like okay we've gotten kind of spoiled we lived on an island it was perfect weather every single day all year long yeah. and new well, zealand Hawaii was, will ruin you as a yeah <laughs> new zealand weather. was really <laughs> very wet rainy uh there were be beautiful times of the year but it, most of the year is very wet and rainy and we were like, okay, we're kind of done with that. Um, so, you know, the East Coast is very, you know, the middle of the East Coast. We never lived uh, on the East Coast. And we were like, okay, well, Florida's too hot. New York is way too cold. Let's see, where's the temperate area in there? And we're like, well, seems like they've got a really good thing going. And it's still, you know, only a few hours from the ocean. So we don't have to give up the ocean. So, yeah. And it was like, you know, culturally, this, this area, we're in the Research Triangle area, and there's a lot of different cultures here. And yeah, when you diverse. leave this area, North Carolina is more of kind of the North Carolina people think of when they hear North Carolina. It's more like the South. Mm. We had lived yeah. in Kentucky. We had our daughters in Kentucky. We lived in the South, like the, the mental South, uh, which is, is hard. Like, we don't yeah. fit in that culture. So we felt like this, this area, when they came to see it and everything we'd read about it, you know, this area survived the housing crisis right. and it's having had stable. to go through that and lose our home, you know, this, because there's just so much here, there's hospitals and universities and tech company. It's like all this stuff in the research triangle that was, is kind of stable. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. one of the reasons I think that we picked this and yeah. it's like, you know, there's a lot of sort of nice areas that you can live and yeah, I think that's ultimately in the, yeah, yeah. the ocean. And, and yeah. Yeah. It just ticked a lot of boxes for us and the mountains. So we're, we're flanked by the ocean and the mountains. Yeah. So we're like, okay, three hours, three hours west, we can be in the mountains, three hours east, and we're in the ocean. So that seems like a pretty ideal spot, you know? Yeah. I was told Jessica if I was going to live somewhere, it'd be the, like the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Like, that's the place yeah, that I like the most. That. So we tried that. Too rainy. We lived outside of Too gray. Love, I love the rain. I love yes, overcast water. skies. I love Her daughter's like, it's like that's that's why I loved England actually every time we've we've gone there so far is that like I'm like I feel like I'm home for some reason this is weird yeah, right. but but like I love I loved going to Seattle and Vancouver and like those places those are just like uh 
just absolutely fantastic. Not to mention they had like the best apple cider that I've ever had in my life over there. <laughs> yes, that's so true. Yeah. Like, I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm, beautiful there. We're sun lizards. Like yeah. you see a lizard laying on a rock in the sun. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of, I mean, we grew up in the cold and we're just like, no, I don't think I can go back. The feet of snow and, you know, 50 degrees below zero wind oh, chill. Yeah. No, uh, I don't, I don't know. But now, you know, life is different. I'm like, it's really, I mean, that's the one thing about North Carolina, that the trade-off is humidity. Yeah. Oh God, yes. You know, it's sweltering there's three here, whole yeah. months of like 90 some degrees and sweltering humidity. So yeah. uh, that is a little hard to take, but the rest of the year, I mean, we can be outside, we can walk our dog in, in, in the middle of winter and not be super freezing, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I can have a garden pretty much year round. So that's a huge plus. In St. Louis, we have the worst of both worlds. So we have the extreme humidity and the heat, as well as the uh, absolutely debilitating cold weather. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right. And it changes yeah, from week to week. So <laughs> you know which one. <laughs> like today, it's actually really nice. It's nice and cool out. There's a breeze. Like everything was fantastic. And it's like, but you know, in a week, who knows? Like it could probably jump back up to 100 and we, you know, we will, we'll just adapt to it. Right. Right. The, t the town I'm from originally in upstate New York, I think it was two years ago, in two days they got nine feet of snow. Oh, good Lord. Like, people are like shoveling from their windows out of yeah. their house. And no. So we, we grew up with that stuff and we're just like, ah, no more. Whiteouts, yeah. no. Done. I mean, it's, it's 50 degrees it here. It seems romantic like, oh, and quaint, cold. you know, until you're in it and you're like, wow, this, yeah, this is not fun. It's hard. <laughs> I will, I will tell you this, that uh, I did enjoy the cold a lot more when I was fatter than, than I do now when I'm skinnier. <laughs> so so, true. Uh, it's like, and the more weight I lose, the colder I seem to get. And I'm just like, this is not fun anymore. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I still don't want to go out into the sun. So Jessica and I are both that way. Like she, she, she's one of those people that like she steps out into the sun and she burns, you know, it's like, but yeah, for me, I can, I can still go out and tan and stuff like that. But you know, I just, I've never, I'm a night owl. I like staying up super late. You know, I don't want to get up in the morning. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of a person. So I've always been, you know, as much as I can avoid the sun, the better. So That's funny. I, I, I would be out all day, every day, if I could just yeah. stay outside. I don't like being inside. Yeah. Hey, I don't judge people who are that way though. It's like you do yeah. you, you know, you That's go out, you live your life and be as happy as you want to be. Each climate has the people that want that climate. Right. And you're proof of like our oldest daughter, she loves the cold and the rain. It yeah, she wants to live in there. Oregon. You know, she wants to live in the Pacific Northwest. And I mean, we were, we're like, we've been there. We did that. But for us, yeah, that gray overcast for eight months of the year, no thanks. Forget the sads or whatever. Yeah, it was depressing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the vitamin D will be an issue uh, for, yeah. for that one. So, right. But uh, so, I mean, like, you you guys have have been doing the uh, the the YouTube channel now for a, a good while now. How many years now? Six years. Almost in six. Yeah. All right. And and uh, you said originally that it started out as the the Nutritarian cooking show, and then you transitioned to the whole food plant based cooking show, and uh, and you guys have just done like tons and tons of videos now at this point, right? Like yeah, hundreds. hundreds yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I, we're, we're up to uh, one, 139, I think, was the last episode that we actually posted for, for what we do. Because we do, we do two a week, and, and uh, you know, we, we try to balance it out between, like, the vlogs and the recipes and, like, that kind of stuff. Um, but, but you do, you, like, you hammer out those recipes. And, just and, once a week. Once a week. Yeah, just once a week, so. Yeah. We never uh, get into the vlogging. Part of it yeah it was really just about the, the food but we're well, kind of private yeah we're people. kind of private folks and we have kids so we knew and jeff yeah. was a web developer so he knew the ins and outs of the whole mm. uh, the internet world before it was a big thing so we yeah. had that thoroughly ingrained into us you know like to be very careful about what you say and how much personal stuff you put out, put out there because i mean we get we get enough trolls and weird comments without even putting anything personal out there so yeah, I can't even imagine if we would go into blog style and you know, and having two teenage daughters. No, nope. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, there was a uh, Jessica kind of freaked out one time when I said where I went to church, and uh, and she was just like, "Why would you do that?" And I'm just like, uh, "I don't know." Like I 
go to a church. We have security. Like I'm, I'm perfectly safe there. Like there's, there's no problem with that. I was like, and besides if some random person wants to show up and just say hi, then like, I'm, I'm cool with that. So, but I actually, uh, the funny thing for me is I did actually contact my pastor and I was like, look, I can totally remove this part. Like, and just, just take it out completely. I was like, but if you want to leave it in there, it's like, it's your church, your thing. And he was just like, yeah, leave it in there. Why not? And I was like, all right. It's a good idea. So if anything happens, it's on him. You remember that. This is documented now. <laughs> it's, right. it's, you know, it's different. I, I knew because of the work I was doing about like, we didn't use Facebook or anything other than just posting the shows. Mm. But our family, our kids, like they weren't allowed to use any of that stuff. But it's because of the work I did, I knew. So now it's right. all coming out, like what these companies are doing, and, you know, what they're, they're fostering and platforms. And, but that was clear to us back then. So we're just like, yeah, we, we don't want Yes, we'll just keep this about the food. It, it's know? not about our, our life. You know, that's everybody's choice to do that. But we, we just thought, you know, we're really protective of our little family unit, you know, because mm -hmm. we're kind of here on our own. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, we don't want anything... Uh, wrecking that little game we have you know <laughs> yeah no i completely understand that one uh jessica and i we we definitely are protective of of certain aspects of our life and certain things that we try to to keep away from from you know outsiders uh but at the same time we are very like honest and straightforward people and you know that's just that's the way we we've always been you know we don't we don't want to like like necessarily hide anything but at the same time we do want to protect ourselves from uh, from any possible threat that might might come from that, but you know. And you got you know your story. Our our story was more just about making the recipes, but yeah. mm -hmm. the story like going from yeah, yours is pounds, more people need to hear that story. Yeah, it's, it's something wonderful. we actually we want to do more. So inspired. We were talking about if we do more stuff on the show. One of the first things we would probably do is try to interview people who watch our show that have transformation stories right. because Share that stuff stories. helps people. It's yeah. Like, oh this lady's just like me or this guy's just like my dad. And right. So I, I, we appreciate that kind of content. Yeah. yeah I went it, to True North, uh, you know, the True North Health Center, Dr. Uh, mm -hmm. I did a yeah. fast out there with my daughter. And I was amazed. I was like, I, wa I was there for 30 days and I watched people crawl in the front door and then like dance out the door, you know, 15 days later from water fasting and changing their diet. And I was like, you guys have to set up a camera. And yeah, you have to interview these people. Film them when they people. come in. And film them when they go out. And just put They're a channel. Missing up. an opportunity to, yeah. to show. I saw, so, I saw such amazing stuff mm. when I was there. People who were completely debilitated, and they left all going kinds of drugs hiking and, in the mountains, know. like in just a matter of you know fifteen days or twenty days. It was astonishing to see. And it's still, it's like you wouldn't really know. They go, Dr. Goldner has some talks and stuff online, but you wouldn't really know what happens there. Yeah, if you're in one of the films. It's a couple of people in the like what the hell if they were at your world. Yeah. yeah, and we've seen plenty of people interviewed in like Well Your World. Um, mm -hmm. guy, he yeah, he's interviewed. That. He went there yeah. and did a fast. Several interview. people have interviewed them, and they're yeah. on, on their campus. But yeah, I had Dylan on the show a couple of weeks ago, actually. Oh, you did? Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah, and uh, and uh, he his uh, his girlfriend slash semi co-host uh reebs we're going to get her on for a separate show with jessica so they can chat about some stuff as well oh, so nice. i'm looking forward to that episode just because i don't have to do anything except edit after that and yeah right. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, so uh but yeah the transformation of of individuals is is one of the most powerful things you can you can tell people uh and and i think that it's like what you said like that's one of the reasons why our channel like resonated with a bunch of different people because it was like this huge huge transformation and um and i know for just me personally and i've, I've talked about this on the show and i've talked about this on 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 the youtube channel as well like that there are a lot of people out there who are exactly like me like these these and i, I call us fat nerds because that's what we are we're fat nerds like there are two types of nerds that i've discovered there are the skinny nerds that eat whatever they want and never ever get fat and then there are the other ones that we whatever they want and then they get super super fat i'm one of the super fat guys yeah. and so the fact that i could actually like showcase to other people who are just like me that yes you can change and it's not it's, it's, yes, it's difficult, but it's not insanely difficult. You don't have to completely wreck yourself at a gym to try and lose the weight. You can yeah. literally you just. Or risk your life with you know, surgeries and things. Yes. Like 
Like if you can literally change your life just by changing the way that you eat. And it's, it's that simple. It's a simple lesson that I think people need to learn. And so I'm glad that I can be sort of that image for other people. And, yeah, right. and even you guys on for the ride, you know, yeah. you guys are still, you're still in it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Still. Yeah, mine, so mine wasn't as extreme. Uh, I was too, I think I was 270 at my heaviest. And I ended up losing, I went down to like 185 after I finished my fast. I'm like two, probably 215 right now. Mm. But, but it also like, there's a lot of people that were just like that. Like they, they're much, I was stage one obese. I had just crossed the line and you realize like, if I keep going, you know, yeah, my when life you were, at five is going to get pretty dark. Yeah. So I, it's funny. We have a couple of videos where there's, I have my, 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 I call my fat picture and I was wearing a, 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 a diving wet suit, wetsuit. And I just felt like a, like someone had just packed the sausage into the suit. <laughs> and, and we were we were looking for the pictures, and I found Jill's fat picture. I was like, "Hey, this is your fat picture." And she was so angry at me initially. She's like, "What? You can't call it that." I was like, "These are our fat pictures. That's what they are. This is us at our most you know rotund yeah. or whatever." The <laughs> we love finding our old fat pictures. That's always great. it's fantastic to see. Uh, so I actually do have just a couple more questions for you. These are not food related whatsoever. All right. They're actually music related because yeah. as, as we discovered today, um, and, and I wanted to ask you about this, uh, you guys are apparently in a band together. Yeah. 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 We have been mind. ever since before we got married. Yeah. We actually kind of started jamming he, together. Yeah. I had a band when I met him. Um, just this little, little, I don't know, like, it was the, the guy that I mentioned that had the brain damage. Oh, okay, yeah. Clayton, right. It was me and Clayton and a couple of people. We would just get together and jam, yeah. and Jill came to that. And I came and watched one day, and, you know, they wanted a singer. And I, I wasn't into that type of music, so it didn't really, didn't really go, anywhere. go, you know, jam with me. But When we got married, though, that's, we started writing music together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the kids, it's like we wrote enough songs. We have one album out. <laughs> it's just five songs and it's kind of a long story but we and where can i buy said album what's that where can i buy the album oh yeah it's uh, uh undyingfire.com is our our website for that stuff gotcha i like that that's a good name yeah, that was 20 years ago 20, 20 yeah tw no 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 20 years ago well when we made the album that was God, we almost that. 20 years ago yeah, yeah. it was, was, it was when iTunes started it was a crazy, it's crazy like we we recorded our album we ran our money so we just stopped at five songs we did it ourselves we took out a mortgage on our house and <laughs> built a little studio <laughs> in our house. oh wow which was way crazy harder story. to do then than it is long, now long yeah but we we've got enough songs and we went through cd baby which was early days with cd baby and iTunes had just started. Napster had, had the whole thing happen. Mm -hmm. and Apple was like, we're going to do this thing called iTunes. And CD Baby was the only uh, non-record label invited to the party. So when we released our CD, it went into iTunes when mm -hmm. iTunes started. And oh, wow. our music, strangely, like we get a check for like $10 a month, <laughs> or $15 a month. With, since then, every year, every month, all of this time, like yeah. people just all over the world listening to or buying one of our tracks. Yeah. We've never played a show, we've never done a gig. But it's, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of, a, it's kind of, you know, that was a phase in our life where we were a bit more, um, I, I hate to say that, like religious. More religious. It yeah, was. it's it kind was of a religious, religion. Uh, yeah, it was for our religion at that time. It, it's not like popular music, you know. Uh, the stuff I mean, we do you, now is more is more just mainstream, you know. It's not a religious. Uh, yeah, it's just more like our. I don't know. Uh, what, what is yeah. religious, right? Well, I mean, yeah. you are you are literally talking to a uh, Christian singer songwriter, yeah. so <laughs> right. you know, like. But uh, I I was raised on all different kinds of music anyway, and and so I love going back and listening, especially to people that I know. Like I obviously like I want to go listen to this now just so so I can experience it. Uh, but like, so what instruments like do you guys actually play? Like, if any, uh, Jill sings. I'm actually trying to learn how to sing now, which is not easy as an adult. But uh, she's really, really sings like Talia. It's they, they sing, sing, she sings all the harmonies, and everything, and then I do all the music. So whether it's drum machines or I play little drums, bass, guitar. Uh, I don't gotcha. really play keyboards, but I do the sequencing and the produce the stuff. Yeah. I do uh, Talia's her produced songs. I do those with her too. So yeah. I'll do like basic. He's really gotcha. good at it. He's really yeah. good at it. I'm cool. I'm very excited to work on our own stuff again. We've we've had we've written stuff over the years, ever since that first album. 
and it's just been sitting there because you know our main job is you know as parents and providers so that's taken the back shelf for a long long time yes. and we're finally in a position now where we have a little extra time so we're we're just starting to toy around with maybe we should get back to that and start putting out stuff and it was you know honestly it was talia like seeing yeah. her take off and trying to help her produce her songs got me really excited to get about music because wow. like, you, you've heard she's yeah, so she's, good it's like i yeah. feel like i'm watching um uh, like Pink Floyd or something take off from our house. Yeah, right. Like just this amazing, you right. know, raw talent. Like, you know. I get to be part of that. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's a way better guitar player than I'll ever be. So yeah, there's <laughs> there's that. <laughs> I, I watch her, and you know, she doesn't look at her hands, and she does all of this finger picking stuff, and singing these really complicated things at the same time. And I'm like, what? How, yeah. how is this possible? Yeah, her, her vocal rhythm in relation to her, her strumming or yeah. picking rhythm is just completely off. And like, it throws me off because I'm a drummer. So it's like, I'm just like, okay, you know. How does she do that? Have you heard her song, uh, Sequences? It's, yes. That we just released it on iTunes. Yeah. That's by far my favorite one so far. Yeah. Like, she, she gave me that track with her just playing guitar. It's like, like three chords that we're like, and we built all of these different styles of music. Like there's some reggae, there's some like hip hop stuff in there, there's some soul stuff in there, but her vocals were already recorded and she was doing all of that stuff over mm. top of this guitar track. Yeah. So it was just matching the music and to all the stuff that was already there. So I just laid some music under it and it's like all the vocals and harmonies and all the stuff going on were already in the track. And I was like, that is just, what, what is that? Yeah. And she'll, <laughs> she'll like, it used to be, you know, we had this set bedtime, like, you know, at nine o'clock, you guys have to go upstairs. You got to go to your rooms. We don't care if you're sleeping or whatever you're doing, but we you're actually the same rule. separate parent time, <laughs> separate parent time, because we weren't taking care of ourselves. We were just burnt out all the time. No, like too much family time, you know, homeschooling and being home and working at home, all this stuff. We're like, okay, we have to have some time where it's just us. So it'd be nine o'clock at night. We'd send them to bed. And she'd sneak 10 down, 10.30, so. yeah. she'd sneak down and say, um, do you guys want to hear a new song that I made? And she'd, she'd play, play this song. Songs. And this would happen like <laughs> twice a week for years. So she has this repertoire of music that is just unfathomable, yeah. like how much she has that hasn't been recorded yet. And each song is better than the last. And we just sit there, our mouth on the floor, like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, I can't believe we just experienced that. <laughs> like, if for, you know, for your listeners, anybody who homeschools their kids or thinks about it, especially with COVID yes, going on, do it. Talia is, is like the example of if you give a kid the tools and the time and the yep. encouragement, Let if they have some as fully as you know, talent for it, some interest in it, like this is what happens. Like yeah. we just yeah. watch that happen. I'm like, yeah. you want a guitar? We'll get you a guitar. You want, yeah. She has a little studio in her bedroom now. So you want speakers and a whatever you need like we'll we'll hook that up <laughs> yeah my my two my my two nephews and my niece uh they're they're all homeschooled and um uh, and one of them one of them's a teenager the other two are, are younger so uh my old my oldest nephew uh on on my brother's side um and he he's like an absolute genius and it's one of those classic examples like you just said like he he's he's not a music person whatsoever like in fact music confounds him and he doesn't understand, which is crazy for the rest of us because we're all a music family. Right, uh, right. But he's just the type of kid that you like, here you go, here's, here's a massive box of Legos, do whatever you want. Yeah. And then he would build just these incredible things. And then he was like, okay, uh, here's, here's like a robotics kit, do something. And he right. builds a robot. And then it's like, it just kept progressing and progressing and progressing uh, for that. And now he's like, he's you know like a teenager, he's like 13, 14 years old like already getting like college courses and stuff like that and like and all this other just amazing stuff he wants to go to mit and like become an engineer you know like yeah. all this kind of stuff and i was just like do it yeah just provide them with the time and the tools i mean even when they were younger it was like you know everybody kept asking us oh what curriculum are you following i'm like we don't really follow one you know we were kind of more like unschooling but we did teach them academics but it was through their interests we're like we followed their interest and we tried to mix in a math lesson or, a, or an English lesson and writing and all of that into what they were interested in, yeah. you know. And, and then, we failed at math. Yeah, well, <laughs> didn't, well no, yeah, I didn't. wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Well, I mean, in the sense, like, if you just went to high school, 
you know, you would yeah, there were a lot, a, of, a lot of gaps, but I mean, homeschooling is not easy, it's especially not easy. when, yeah. you know, if your kids aren't super into it or into thinking that you're the teacher. And <laughs> the mom, yeah. The teacher. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work so well. But when they, it comes we realize if they learn to read really well, because yes. that's how we are. We're I actually dropped out of high school. Readers, we're, yeah. we're sort of self-educated people. And, and once you understand how to read and think and process information and research things, yeah. that's, that's, the the, and, and, yeah. And you have the confidence to do that. You know? Yeah. And that, I, I see our kids, like our oldest daughter is working on a, her first novel right now. She finished the first draft. And it's yeah. funny because she's like, well, I could take a class in writing a novel or I could write a novel. Yeah. Or like, just write. Just write. It. <laughs> you know? just, yeah. Then yeah. take a class. And, and this learn, time that you know. they've been, you know, we've been home. We're like, cause she's, she's been taking, you know, she's in college uh, part time, but we're like, okay, take this opportunity where we're stuck at home. Use the time. Yeah. Just okay. do it. Get it done. Cause you have this opportunity sitting in your lap. You're not going to, hopefully you're not going to get this kind of chance again, yeah, you right. know, like take it, spend as yeah. much time as you possibly can, you know? Yeah, Sorry, it was a tangent. <laughs> no, 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 it was a good tangent, though. Uh, so uh, kind of tie it all back to to the music stuff. Jessica and, and Reeves, uh, you know, from Well Your World, they keep trying to push this thing uh, with me, Dylan uh, from Well Your World and uh, Tom from Nutmeg Notebook, that we're all musicians. And they want to start a whole food plant based band called oh my gosh, that's the Sprouts. The Sprouts. And so, so are you guys interested in joining the Sprouts? You know, whenever we 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 get it together and you know go on world tour and all that. So well, maybe we'll maybe we can do like backup um, harmony vocals or something. But yeah, being part of a, a music group probably isn't really our jam because we're we're. I'm, so I, it, I'm <laughs> being totally facetious about it. It's it's not a real thing, and it'll never actually happen. Uh, but it's just it's the joke that I throw out there of just like, hey, you want to join our band? Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the sprouts, it's funny you said sprouts. Oh, sprouts. We, yes. We saw the interview on Rich Roll with um, I forget his name. Doug Evans. Doug Evans, a sprouting guy. And we about three weeks ago we just got the jar lids, and you know, Jill had done some sprouting before, but we weren't really into it. Into it. She, she was, but we've gotten like really into it. So we're eating sprouts with every single meal. It is definitely something to consider with a plant-based diet. Blow your mind. So the way we felt when we went plant-based, like how much better we felt doing the sprout thing, like yep. just notched that up. Talk about energy. We're going to oh do some content gosh. on it soon, but it's definitely nice. worth mentioning. Like that is like a whole thing in itself, like yeah, getting organic seeds and sprouting. totally them. leveling up. Like, I'm I'm really looking forward to the day when I can actually have myself a garden of some kind and I can actually grow things on my own and, and use them uh, because, you know, I live in an apartment in, in, a, in a city. And so it's like I've, I've only got very limited amounts of, of space and stuff that I can use certain things for. And, and we get like zero sunlight in our apartment. So perfect for sprouts. That's a perfect yeah. sprouts. Perfect. You don't have to have sun. You don't have to have space. You don't have to have like you can. You don't yeah. have to have any talent. Like, you know, they don't, I don't, you just it takes a few them days. The There's thing. no, hardly any yeah, risk. You, you know, a bag of sprout, sprouting seeds is pretty affordable for as mm. much food as it makes. As it makes. And in like three days, you have tons and tons of sprouts. Like, it's. His, his point that the reason I mentioned this too is so interesting, especially like during COVID and people trying to get healthy food, and, is that you can end up just sprouting organic seeds. So you're eating organic produce. Right. But you don't have to have a garden, you don't have to have soil, you don't have to have anything mm -hmm. other than just like one square foot of space for two jars. On your countertop, right. And they sprout in a couple of days. There's there's mm -hmm. like more complex sprouting and simple sprouting, but mung beans, lentils, quinoa, buckwheat, those are the main ones we do. And it's like two, three days, and you've got a huge mason jar full of sprouts. Gotcha. All you do is rinse them twice a day. Yeah. Like there's, you soak them there's once. There's hardly any work day. involved. It's amazing. Man, we're making recipes with them. And it's amazing because you can make, I make our cheese instead of using oats, I'll use buckwheat sprouts because they, mm. and they turn into a creamy base for a salad dressing or whatever. But then you're eating concentrated organic produce yeah. mm. that you produced yourself because you, you don't have to go try to buy it at the store. So his point was like food deserts and, you know, the, the injustice of the food system. This is a way around that for people that are trying to do plant-based stuff. Yep. Even on a super so low income, you can talk, produce... Yeah. A huge amount of food for pennies you know for for yeah compared to the cost it's a, it's of like amazing. buying produce yeah, so. yeah. another yeah. taste of, uh, 
You mentioned sprouts. It's, it's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine on, on this. So like I said, I, I love having conversations with people. And honestly, I, I mean, I, I say this to, to you know, I, I think I said this to Dylan as well. Like, I honestly feel like I could probably talk to you guys for like a few days, right. like, right. like easily. And, and like, just, I'd love to hang out with you guys sometime. Um, we are, we are, we get to meet once this COVID is, yeah, you know, little we little. are planning a big like road trip and we are going to go like out East and stuff. We are going to go visit Brittany Giroudi and like, um, and, and some other people that we know, some other, some other people that we've interacted with. And we're heading down to South Carolina. I don't think there's any problem with going through North Carolina to get there and stopping by and saying hi. At this point, because we're we're really we're taking the whole quarantine thing really seriously. And, and this this won't happen until next year, so we're there good. You go. All right. So we'll 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 be we'll be plenty healthy by then. So we'll be All good. Right. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm I'm looking forward to the day when I actually do get to meet you guys in person. That'll be that'll be oh, amazing great. and and all of that. So because the days of COVID, it's it's. It's weird because now like everything's just online anyway, but, uh, right. but at the same time, like, you know, I, I do miss actually going and seeing people. It is nice, yeah. especially people that are like in this field, you know, because yes. Jessica and I, we're, we're it as far as like where we're at, you know, yeah. there, we know a couple of other people that are in St. Louis who do the same, same kind of thing, but at the same time, they aren't like, you know, close personal friends of ours. And so like for us, that's it. And, you know, but we really want to go out there and actually interact with more people and, and do all that kind of stuff. But that's awesome. Yeah, we're but, kind of in the same boat. I think people we assume that you do a either. show like this. You know, we, yeah, they think you're surrounded by plant-based people all the time. It's, yeah, it's definitely it's the not the case. You know, there is a, a, a couple meetup groups here that are, that are a bit more substantial, but yeah, we don't have a whole lot of close friends that are, you know, we have our little, little handful of yeah. people that we know that that do the same thing that we do and you know like we're, we're li really good friends with the uh plant fear nation folks mm -hmm. awesome they, they actually live like yeah they just live really. close by oh wow but yeah that's that's really great because you know we we meet up together or we you know we'll have dinner together this was before covid yeah, thanks, it's like it's like, it's like we wrong. don't have to question you don't have to explain <laughs> to people like well you know we don't eat meat you know we're that the food that we're going to cook is going to be like this. We're just like, all oh, right, I get to eat somebody else's cooking. Oh, dude, so <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to wonder if it, I can eat it or not. Yeah, that, that is the best part about any of that uh, is, is going to somebody else's house and not having to worry about like what's actually going to be there or anything. Awesome. It's, and you don't have to have those awkward conversations with people. Right. Of course, I, well, I, mean, I love the awkward that? conversations. <laughs> yeah. or, or the whole you know where do you get, you know the standard questions where do you get your protein from where do you get your calcium or are, are you concerned about your children you know like uh. I, I always joke around somebody's like well are you concerned about this and we're like uh yeah sure why not i'm okay like and then i just move on from there for the conversation right. uh like but yeah I, I mean i'm i am the type of person though that thrives on conflict i'm one of the i i, I love debating people about things and so when when we switched over I was literally like, ask me anything, ask me anything. I was like, if, if I don't know the answer, I know where I can get the answer. And then I will come back to you and I will show you exactly what I know. And, uh, I would, and, I would watch that show. Yeah, that, right. That would be it'd be, it'd be fascinating, <laughs> especially. Yeah, you could have debates. <laughs> Set up a table somewhere and just be like, <laughs> tell me why I shouldn't be plant-based. <laughs> Oh yeah. And I mean, since, since I get all these comments anyway, from all these random people and actually one thing worked out extremely well this last time, uh, somebody, somebody linked to a video and it was somebody, it was somebody talking, interviewing a, a carnivore keto doctor. And he lays out, this is the numbers that you're looking for with your blood test. This is the stuff that you're wanting for your indicators for health and all of this kind of stuff. And I compared uh, I compared their numbers to my numbers because I, I went to the doctor a few months ago and I got all my blood work done. Right. I compared the two and I matched or beat everything that he said was the designator for health. And I'm doing the exact opposite what he says you should do and what he says is detrimental to your health. And so I'm just like, all right, come at me, bro. Cause yeah, right. <laughs> <I've got the> <laughs> it's like, you may be a doctor, but I am living proof that what you are saying isn't true. So am, am I the weird exception? Am I the mutant of this? Or am I a standard to which you just don't want to look at and you don't want to actually see the data that is behind it? Right. You know, something with blood work that was interesting when we went to True North, um, they do your blood work because I did a, a fast. 
So they do your blood work before you start, and then they do it as you go. So I, I did it as like 17 days. Um, so they're testing you once a week. And the crazy thing was, because we already plant-based, he's like, your blood work is awesome. Like, this is what we want people to leave here with. You're coming in with that. So mm -hmm. let's see how that goes in a fast. My blood work stayed awesome, drinking water for 17 yeah. days. He's like, your cells have stored everything they need, and your body is managing this. And I went through some detox, and it, and it wasn't easy. But the fact that my blood work looked the same after that amount of time, not even eating at all, just drinking mm -hmm. water because of the preparation amazing. I had done. That was mind blowing to me. I was expecting to see it, you know, a bunch of the numbers drop and people yeah. like worrying about where you're getting your calcium. Like, how about not eating at all? Just being yeah. plant based before and after. All right. <laughs> you're still fine. Yeah. So, uh, is uh, besides the channel, which is a whole food plant based cooking show on YouTube, is there anything else that you guys are looking to, you know, promote or anything else uh, as we as we close out the show? Yeah, uh, we have a cookbook, um, which it's is super Yay! excited. Yeah. November 20 something. It's for pre order right now. Yeah, so you can pre order on Amazon. Uh, plant based cooking. I'm, I'm actually yeah, we'll really see. looking forward to getting into it too. So. Oh, that's right. You have the, that's yeah, right. yeah, we sent it. Um, and that's, that's awesome because uh, Hathaway approached us. And it was so cool. I think it was the CEO, the guy in charge. He was going plant based. He was watching the show. It's like, man, we'd love to do a cookbook of what you guys are doing. Yeah. So it came about in a very cool, like organic way. Yeah. Uh, and we've been working on it. it, got delayed because of COVID. So it's been a long time coming. Uh, it's gonna be 101 recipes. And we took all the photos, we wrote the whole book, like it's all yeah. from us, you know, to, to the world kind of thing. So, right. so we're, we're super excited. Super excited. Yeah. November 20 something. And the, the other thing I would mention is our, um, we have shifted our show, you've probably seen this, to being a member supported show. Yes. Uh, we like to think of it like NPR. And it's the reason I mentioned that is probably for you guys, probably for anyone who's a creator. Um, we decided, and we took a lot of, of, of hate for this when we did it. Yeah, we just made a video and explained it. it showed the, the math of the, the revenue from a YouTube channel of our size and what people assume it is and what it really is and you know, what that is like, how much time it takes to make stuff. And initially, we got a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. But we also saw people just go, hey, man, I never thought about it. I never thought about the fact that all the stuff I watch on YouTube, someone's making. Yeah, it's it free for me, but it's not free for that guy who's making. Yeah. And that transition, you know, we're still working to get to where it's like a full-time thing because we both do this full-time. Um, but it, we're getting there. And that transition has been so huge for us to want to keep going. Like right. this is a feasible thing if people recognize if they contribute just a tiny bit, you know, five bucks a month or whatever. If everybody was doing that for the people who they enjoy as content creators, mm -hmm. those people could be content creators without having to, you know, bow to YouTube ad revenue. And, right. You know, people complain, oh, there's there's an ad in my way. And it's like, well, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, how do you think this works? Like we just we're just gonna do all this, this you know, putting all this time everybody. for free. You're like, well, you know, I don't expect people to go and work at my favorite restaurant and not get paid Steve just because free. they enjoy doing it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like this is what we love to do and, and we know it's helping people. We're um, trying to figure out like, how yeah, to or do how that. to how to make this into a like a job, I guess, you know, you'd say a career. We try yeah. to make our memberships too. It's funny. People will write us confused because we make our memberships so attractive. Like we have our course and that's it's helping a lot of people. It took, it took a lot of work to make it. And we have our e-cookbooks and stuff. And when you sign up for our membership, like we try to give you everything. So it's like yeah. for five dollars you get a hundred dollars of the stuff. Access to everything. Fifteen dollars you get all our courses, like everything we do. It's like here, just support our show. That's really yeah. what we want to do. Right. We don't want to try to sell you stuff as much as just have people. So that was our, our pitch to the world was like, if you can afford it, contribute. If you can't, our content is for you both. Yeah. That's the it's idea. Also free. It's like people can afford it, pay. People can't, don't have to pay. And it's free and they can access right. it because that's ultimately, we're, we're subversive. Like we want the world to go plant-based because of climate change and because of our health. And we know that those are connected. So we don't talk right. about climate change on our mm -hmm. show because it brings a lot of haters and yeah. we're like well if we just get people healthy then they won't fight you and well and people and, come to it on, on their own and in our in our course we we lead people like what you said you you research everything and if you don't know the answer you show people where that where, where they, they can, can find, find that answer so we give them all the documentaries and all of the 
the books that we've read and where we found the information so that they can learn for themselves. Because yeah. there's so much more power in that when they learn for themselves, not when we're just telling them. Yeah, telling them. We want them to it, to be a process because it is it really you have to you have to go through some type of process like this to really understand the root of what you're doing and why why, why yeah. you make these choices. Yeah. And the more but, like the more why you can put together that it's your health, it's climate change, it's the abuse of it's animals, all it's you know the food system injustice. Of, it's like all of those things you realize that you're having an impact on by making this change. Yeah, it's so much easier to do when you don't feel motivated to. It's like, well, this is like the best thing I can do as a human being. And if we can help other people do it, then that just multiplies the yeah. math of it. So. Well, guys, this has been an absolutely incredible interview. The longest interview I think that I've done so far. We are cruising along in an hour and 25 minutes right now. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. like I said, I feel like we could talk for a long time afterwards. So, nice. uh, but thank you guys so much for coming on, Jeffrey, Jill. Uh, you guys, uh, like I stated in the beginning of this one, you, you, your show was an inspiration for our channel, and you definitely made the the transition to a whole food plant-based way of eating easier uh, just by the content that you actually made. So, and we have made some of your dishes and they are awesome. So I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to this, this cookbook and getting into it and, and, and all of that. So I think that it's going to be amazing. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you thank so, you much, so Brian. much, Brian. And please tell Jessica, hi, I'm sorry that we couldn't actually sit and chat with her too, but we will meet her eventually. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so to all of you who are out there listening to this, uh, please, uh, we've got links in the description for uh, all of their channels, including Talia's music channel. And, uh, and go give her a listen, go find a good recipe to make, do all of that kind of good stuff. While you're doing that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and, uh, and the, the podcast here, please do that as well. That is a very nice thing to do. But I think I should bring this one to a close. So I will see you next time on I'm Losing It.